um, Mr. Nyona. I teach an, uh, fine art and design at Majako School. Now, uh, the basis of our discussion today, we basically will be talking about uh, art and design as a subject and or for that matter, as an examinable subject. And uh, we'll have uh, our session in three parts. We'll talk about uh, the syllabus because it forms the basis of examination and the, uh, the basis of uh, the subject. Uh, we'll have a say, uh, the second session as uh, the exam We'll talk about the exam evaluation in our second uh, uh, session. Then we shall talk about the recent trends in the art exam. So feel at home and welcome. Now, to begin with, we all the subjects have what we call a syllabus, a guideline that guides you on what you're supposed to, disc, uh, to go to cover and the timeline for that. That is the document that uh, the Kenya National Examination Council also uses uh, to set your examination. So when you're talking about the syllabus in art and design, in art and design, you first need to understand that we have at least up to 13 important topics in art. Now, when you're talking about uh, the topics, one, we need to have the first topic in art and design is introduction to art and design. That is the far and the foremost uh, important uh, topic. Then we have the topic number two is elements and principles of art and design. Then from elements and principles of art and design, we have our third topic that is drawing and then we have graphic design, we have painting, we have fabric decoration, we have mosaic, we have collage, we have montage and photo montage. Then we have ornaments and jewelry. Then we have for pottery and ceramics, we have sculpture, we have weaving, and lastly on our list, number 14, is exhibitions finishing and display. These, not necessarily is a topic, but it forms part of the, the subtopics in each and every topic that we've mentioned above. That is, the, we, you're supposed to teach it as the critique process in each, uh, in each of the topics, especially after doing the practical bit of the topics. Now, as you prepare for your examination, there are things that you need to consider. There, is, there should be a channel or rather there should be a channeled way by which you should do your revision. We have the topics, the ones that we've mentioned, the 13 of them, but how do you prepare or how do you do your revision when you're, top or when you're uh, looking at the topics? Now, uh, next we shall have the topical breakdown. When you're doing your revision, a topic, what exactly are you supposed to be looking at? Or rather, what specific areas are you supposed to be paying at much attention to? We shall go uh, to the topical breakdown first. 
we talk about the definition of uh, introduction of uh, art and design. And under the introduction of art and design, the students and uh, the learners must be able to define what art and design is. You are, you, uh, the learners are encouraged to understand what art is and what design is because they form the basis of the subject. Away from the definition of uh, the art and design, the learners need to understand the roles of art and design to an individual. That is the role of art and design, uh, the role art and design plays in, the, uh, in an individual life. And then the role of art and design uh, to the, uh, in the society. Then, as part of the introduction of art and design, we have what we call the art forms. The candidates, or rather the learners, must understand when you're talking about art and design, we can loosely define art as the art or the act of transforming ideas into visual images. But then how will the, the images, the visual images, what are they? They are what we refer to as forms of art or articles or items, or rather simply artworks. Now, what are some of these art forms or artworks? They are, one, we talk about drawings, paintings, sculpture, ceramics, prints, fabric decoration, ornament, and jewelry. We have weaves and woven items. We can talk about mosaic. We can talk about collage. We can talk about montage. We can talk about graphic design. And then we have other forms of art. We can talk about the visual art that is in form of videos uh, or even photography. We can also talk about performing art. That is that art that is uh, performed uh, through drama uh, and music. Then we have what we call the martial art. The martial art is majorly uh, practiced in Asian countries. Uh, for example, China, Japan, uh, Thailand, and the rest. Now, as you prepare to revise, you also need to uh, consider the following. When you're talking about the items, the articles, the forms referred to as the artwork. You also need to understand the qualities that make an item to be considered an artwork or an art form. There are qualities that we look for. For an item or for a form to be referred to as an artwork, there are qualities that you need to consider. You must also understand that these art forms and articles, you must be able to mention some famous artists in the society that uh, who have da, who are uh, uh, who are uh, known and are uh, the, are famous for doing some particular artworks, be it in paintings, drawings, ceramics, sculptures, and all that. Now, as a candidate class. What is it that you need to look for as far as revision is concerned or as far as exam preparation is concerned? Now, during the process of learning, you need to look for specific uh, parts uh, guided by the syllabus of art. Details to look for in topic by topic when doing your revision. 
we shall begin with uh, the first uh, the topic in the syllabus, introduction to art. Under introduction, we've mentioned the roles of art to an individual and the society. The other bit that forms the introduction is the elements and principles of art and design. The candidate must be able to mention the elements and principles of art and design. These are guidelines that help in creation of art forms or artworks. For instance, what are some of the elements that you should be able to, under, uh, to mention? We have elements of art and design. One, and the most basic, is dot and line. Two, we have the shape. Three, you need to mention value. And four, you, need, uh, you also need to mention texture. The other element is color. And then we have space. We also have mass, solids, and voids. Those are the basic elements that form the art and design. Under principles, we have balance. For an art form to qualify, or for a form to qualify as an artwork, it must show, or rather we must be able to see the principle of balance. Two, we talk about proportion. For an item or a form to qualify as an artwork, it must be proportional. Then we have the principle of rhythm and movement. Then we have the principle of contrast. We have dominance, harmony, and unity. Again, it is of importance to know that when we are talking about the artworks or the articles or the forms of art that we mentioned, we can classify the artworks into two. We have the three D forms of art, and then we have the two dimensional forms of art. The three D forms of art are collage. Uh, sculpture, we have ornaments, we have weaves, we have sculptures, and we have ceramics, or uh, sometimes referred to as pottery. Those are the 3D forms of art. The 2D forms of art, those that mostly appear that are drawings, painting, Screens, we have mosaics and photo montage and the montage. Graphic design can also be part uh, a form of the two dimensional art. Now we shall look at the topic by topic breakdown of. Uh, the areas, the important areas that you need to pay attention to when doing a revision for the art paper, especially paper one. Now, the topical breakdown is as follows. We have drawing. The first and the foremost important uh, thing, the learners must be able to understand and be able to uh, mentioned is the definition of drawing. The learners must be able to define what drawing is. Other than being able to identify the drawing practically, they must be able to explain what qualifies an art form to be a drawing. Away from the definition, the learner must talk about the techniques of drawing. What are some of the techniques used in drawing? To create marks, you can either sketch, 
you can grab. Those are some of the techniques of creating a, uh, a drawing. Away from the techniques, there are those things that you need when creating a drawing. Those are what we refer to as tools, materials. The candidate, or rather the learners, must be able to mention the functions of the tools and the materials used in drawing. The learner must also be able to mention some of the advantages, or what we call possibilities, of using the tools and the materials. And if the learner is able to, tell, uh, to talk about, it, or rather to highlight the advantages, the learner should also be able to uh, mention the limitations. What are some of the limitations of video, uh, using the tools and the materials? Then we can talk about methods of creating depth. We use uh, most of the time, we teach them as shading techniques. When you're talking about the shading techniques, this is simply uh, a way of creating or rather making the art form appear lively. The techniques, the methods you use to make that art form be more realistic, appear more real. Then we also need to talk about the elements and principles of drawing. Now, the elements and the principles are guidelines. They are simply uh, foundations that helps us create an art form. So for every artwork, there are those elements and the principles that need to be considered, or rather we need them to guide us in doing the work. Uh, something else that uh, you also ought to understand, we have what we call stages of drawing. What are the stages of drawing? For every artwork that you make, you need to understand the process and the, uh, the procedure for making the artwork. In this case in drawing, we can talk about the stages as part of the process of creating a drawing. The procedures, or rather the stages of drawing are one, you need to make sketches. The learners must be able to understand and be able to make sketches. Then from the sketches, we have drawing as a study. It is part of those sketches, making the process of making the sketches forms part of the study, we draw to study. And then lastly, we have drawing as a complete work, doing the finished work. Then, in line with the recent trends in the examination, the candidate must, be, must also be able to mention some of the famous drawings and their creators. It is of importance then to tell the candidate do more research when you're talking about drawing, what are some of the world famous drawings? And who created these drawings? We go to the next topic, that is painting. Again, just like in drawing, the first and the foremost thing or detail that the learners and the candidates must be able to relate to is the definition of painting. That is, the learners must be able to define what a painting is. Secondly, they need to discuss and highlight the roles of painting in a society. What are some of the roles of painting to, uh, in, a, in a society? Paintings can be used to communicate, they can be used uh, to convey a specific message, they can be for utilitarian purpose, they can be for communication, and so on and so forth. Those are some of the roles of painting. When you're talking about painting, you also need to talk about the materials, the tools, and the treatments. 
Wong tak sambung dengan Tuhan yang dimana dia tak tahu apa yang dia. Wong tak sambung dengan Tuhan. Wong tak sambung dengan Tuhan yang dimana. Most of the time, material is required to have those items that we need to create an artwork. For example, when we talk about color, when we're talking about painting, we talk about use of color. So as part of your revision, when you're talking about we are discussing materials, you need to discuss one of the materials such as color in details. That is, the learners must be able to understand what is color. They need be able to define color as a material in painting. They are supposed to understand sources of color. What are some of the sources of color? Though we teach color as an element of art and design, we also need to teach it as a material in creating painting. Then we have the candidate must also be able to understand what is uh, the classifications of color. When you talk about classifications of color, we talk about uh, color as a primary color, we talk about secondary color, we talk about tertiary colors, uh, we talk about complementary colors, and all that. We talk about flat color, or what you know, spot color, and as such. Then, away from classification of color, the candidate must be also be able to understand. Uh, or rather to be able to make a color wheel. The color wheel aids in the creation of color schemes. The candidate must also, or rather the students, let the students understand what properties of color, what are properties of color. Some of the properties of color we have, we talk about here, value and intensity. Then they also need to understand the uses of color, or rather the effects of color. What each and every color stands for. For instance, in the national exam, the case you see probably 2014, there was a question that was asking, was uh, wanted to start, was looking to establish if the candidate. Uh, for example, the color blue. When and at what time or how the color blue is used in the creation of visual symbols and red colors, what it means. That is why the candidate must also be able to understand the effects or rather the uses of color. Then, in the creation of painting, the candidate must be able to talk about it. the tools. What are some of the tools that we use to create a painting? Most of the time we use brushes, we can talk about spray guns, we can talk about a palette light, we can create uh, art using, uh, using sticks and any other existing uh, naturally existing uh, item, objects, can uh, be used to create an art. Then the candidate must also be able to highlight the techniques of painting. Uh, what are some of these shading, te uh, not, uh, shading uh, techniques of painting? We have the wash, we have the brush, stroke, and so on and so forth. Then the other candidates must be able to understand and explain what are the elements and principles of painting. An example of the element is color. The candidate is required to understand the painting movements. Or rather, sometimes we refer to them as types of painting. Now, the painting movement, we have realism, we have impressionism, we have uh, impressionism, expressionism, abstract, 
community, we have variety, and we have kidneys. Those are painting movements, or sometimes we refer to them as kinds of painting. Then again, the candidates must also be able to mention some of the world's famous uh, painters and their paintings. A very good example of some of these uh, famous artists and their paintings. We have the famous painting, Mona Lisa, done by Leonardo da Vinci. We have the, uh, the, uh, the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh, and then the Birth, the birth of Venice by Sandro. And lastly, we can talk about The Last Supper done by Leonardo da Vinci. So let the candidates be able to mention at least a few of famous paintings and uh, the painters who did, who did their work. Then we look at the next topic is topic number five, sculpture. What are some of the details that the candidates should be looking out for as far as sculpture is concerned? Again, just like any other topic, the candidate must be able to define what is sculpture. Then away from the definition of sculpture, let the learners understand the types of culture, uh, sculpture we have. We have uh, what we call relief sculpture, and then we have uh, sculptures in the round. Let the candidates or rather the learners be able to tell the difference between a relief, types of relief sculptures, then we have sculptures in the round. Again, let them mention the types of sculptures in the round. Some of the types of uh, uh, relief sculpture, we have bas relief sculpture, we have intaglio, some types of uh, uh, sculptures in the round, we can talk about mobile sculptures, we can talk about statues, and we can, uh, we can talk about statues as part of uh, types of sculptures in the round. Again, the, uh, the learners should be able to understand, or rather to mention, the materials, the tools, and the techniques of making uh, sculpture. Some, the most important material in sculpture, we can talk about clay. Tools, we have so many that the candidates must pay attention to, right from the clay preparation process all the way to the sculpture making, the techniques and the process of creating sculpture. When you're talking about techniques, we have what we call the additive technique, uh, techniques and the subtractive technique. Some of these techniques include casting, where you use molds. We have modeling. We have building. We have soldering and the rest. Those are the techniques of creating sculpture. It is of importance that the candidate must be able to state and chronologically give the process and the procedure of making sculptures using those additive and subtractive technique. For instance, when you're talking about building, we have what we call the hand building techniques also used in ceramics. So the candidates must, must be able uh, to highlight the process and the procedure of creating a sculpture. Then the, we are the next uh, subtopic in sculpture that the candidate must be able, uh, must uh, look out for is factors to consider in sculpture placement. Now, 
one of the purpose of creating a such a history historian and popular communication. There are those structures that we place outside, what we call the outdoor, and then the structures that we place inside it, uh, uh, our home, the indoor structure. What are some of these cultural factors that you consider when placing a structure? Now, the outdoor, when creating an outdoor structure, you need to consider the factors that can make that particular structure be able to last the harsh weather conditions outside. It's the same when you're placing a structure indoors. Some of these factors include material, the site, and the purpose of the structure. Then, the next subtopic, the, uh, the let the learners be able to understand the importance of sculpture to the society. What is the role of a sculpture in a society? Just like any other art form, the learners must be able to understand some of the roles of sculpture uh, to an individual in a society. The reasons as to, uh, reason as to why we place uh, sculptures uh, in some places. Then we also need to consider, or rather to highlight the elements and principles of sculpture. Remember, when we are mentioning the principles of art, uh, elements and principles of art and design, we did mention mass, voids, and uh, space as elements of art and design. Those elements also apply in sculpture. They are the elements that appear in sculpture. We're talking about elements as the principles of sculpture. Elements such as void, space, plane, contour, and rest. The principles we must have balance. We can have rhythm and movement in sculpture. We can have what we call dominance and exception to contrast and uh, texture as uh, part of uh, the principles. Now, again, just like the other aspects. The candidate, let the candidates be able to familiarize themselves with at least some famous sculptors and sculptors. A, a good example of a sculpture we have, uh, we have one at the Nairobi University. That is one uh, example of a sculpture. So the candidates, let the candidates be able uh, to mention at least a few of uh, sculptures, famous uh, sculptures, and they are, they are the, person, the people, the personalities that lead the sculptures. Of importance to the candidates, these topics have what we call vocabularies. Let the candidates be able to understand some of the vocabularies used in sculpture making. Most of these vocabularies are mainly English words. So as the candidates prepare for the exam, as they read or they study sculpture, let them also make use of the dictionary. It will help them understand some of these vocabularies, because most of them are just uh, uh, English words. For example, you can have words such as colossal. It simply means something big or a, a, a huge sculpture and the rest. Next, we talk about ceramics and pottery as a topic in art and design. The learners or the candidates must be able to define the term ceramics. They also need to, uh, uh, to mention forms or other types of uh, ceramics, the kinds of uh, ceramics that we have. For example, we can talk about the flower vases as part of ceramics. Then 
we have the important factors in the in, uh, production of clay items or rather the production of ceramics. We have the, uh, the learners be able to mention some of the most important factors that we consider when creating uh, clay items. What do you need to understand or what do you need to follow as far as creation of clay items is concerned? Then the learners must also be able to understand the materials used and the treatment of clay, uh, of clay works. What are some of the materials? Again, in this case, the most important material in ceramics and pottery work is clay. So let the, under, uh, the learners understand the definition. The first must start with the definition of clay. What is clay? And then, what are some of the sources of clay? Where do we get clay? Let them also understand the classification of clay. We can classify clay as primary or secondary, or uh, rather uh, sedimentary and residual clay. Let the learners also understand clearly the chronological process of clay preparation, the stages involved in the preparation of clay as a material used in ceramics and pottery. Then, the process and procedure. Just like sculpture, when handling clay to create a ceramic, there are processes and procedures used in creation of the artwork. So what are these processes and procedures? We talk about the hand building technique. What are some of these hand building techniques that the learners must acquit their, uh, themselves with? We have the hand building techniques, that is the ball, we have the slab, we have the pinch, we have the coin, and etc. So those are some of the hand building techniques that uh, the candidates must be able uh, to familiarize themselves with. It is important that uh, the candidates also uh, have a first-hand experience of using those techniques and procedures by doing a practical work. The practical work helps the candidates when handling the field setup for the one. It is easier for the candidates to relate what they've done practically with what is there in theory. It becomes very easy for them to be able to explain what they did practically as compared to then explaining it theoretically. Sometimes it is good to encourage the candidates to do the work practically, as it helps them, it goes a long way in helping the dissertations uh, also in the theory paper. Then, let the candidates understand the decorative techniques. When you are dealing, dealing with the clay ones, we have the decorative techniques of uh, ceramics. What are some of these uh, decorative techniques? We can talk about banshi, we can talk about uh, graffiti, uh, we can talk about uh, incising, sizing, and the rest, and so on and so forth, uh, and so on and so forth. Then we can talk about the firing techniques. Those firing forms part of the decorative techniques of the ceramics and the pottery. Again, it is as important that let the candidates familiarize themselves with vocabulary that come with clay works, ceramics. Example of such words or such vocabularies, you can talk about terracotta, talk about. Uh, uh, silk, 
we can talk about uh, glaze and all that. Let the candidates understand some of these terminologies that come with the ceramics and pottery work. Then we can talk about the next topic, graphic design. What are some of the areas that the candidate need to pay attention to? Again, we start with the definition of graphic design. The candidates must understand what is graphic design or what graphic design entails. We can talk about the products of graphic design. What are some of these art forms or what are some of these items that uh, uh, we create using graphic design? We can talk about the design process. Loosely or rather in simple terms, we talk about the problem solving process in graphic design. The stages involved in the production of a work of graphic design. Then we can talk about the various methods and techniques of printing in graphics. The candidates must also learn and understand the lettering process, the, uh, the role played by lettering in graphic design. We can also talk about the illustrations. What are some of the uh, illustrations that we use in creating uh, a product in graphic design? Well, when you're talking about illustration, we can talk about a text, a typo or typographical illustration or the typography. We can talk about the wash illustration we can talk about the spot color illustration. We can talk about seal hood illustration and etc. These are some the visual images that we use to convey a message in graphic design when uh, creating products of such a design. Then we must also let the candidates also understand what is the role of a layout in graphic design. The factors that guide and determine a layout, how do you do or how do you create? What is the format that you use in creation of a graphic design? What are some of these graphic design products? And why is a layout important in creating those forms of graphic design? Now we have various forms of graphic design. We can talk about posters, we can talk about book covers and book jackets. We can talk about uh, uh, CD sleeves. We can talk about letters. Uh, we can talk about uh, letterheads, badges. Uh, we can talk about uh, uh, logos, what we call the visual symbols and rather and uh, identification symbols. Those are forms of graphic design the products of graphic design. So when creating such, we need to understand what type of layout we require or rather we need in creating such. So what are some of the types of layout or rather format that we use in creating uh, graphic design? We can talk about uh, the asymmetrical layout the symmetrical layout and the radial layout. Those are some of the layouts that we use in creation of uh, graphic design products. Then let the candidates also understand the choice and application of symbols. Talk about symbols, lettering illustration that create effective overall visual impact of the layout and the utility of the graphic design, the roles or rather the purpose of creating a product in graphic design. Then we can talk about the techniques and methods of printing. Print making is a form and a technique in creation of graphic design. 
we have various printing methods. We can have computer aided printing. We can we have computer aided printing. We have uh, other forms of printing such as uh, block printing and all that. And all that. Then uh, another th uh, another subtopic that we need to talk about as far as graphic design is concerned is the visual and identification symbols. Uh, the candidate must be able to understand what are visual symbols. When you talk about the visual symbols, we talk about the road signs. We can also talk about identification symbols. The identification symbols include the emblems, logos, trademarks, uh, talk about badges, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the details that uh, the candidate must pay attention to as far as graphic design, uh, design is concerned. Then we can talk about mosaic, collage, montage, and photo montage. Now, it is of importance to note that when you're talking about collage, mosaic, montage, and photo montage, these are art forms that the process of creating them or uh, their creation process is more or less the same. We are talking about using uh, materials to create an art form through pasting. The pasting we use adhesives and materials we can get them from naturally existing materials to cut out paper, uh, papers, pictures, and photographs. So what are some of the breakdown, or what is the breakdown as far as uh, Mosaic is concerned? What does the candidate need to know? One, the candidate must be able to understand the definitions of Mosaic, collage, montage, and photo montage. The candidate must be able to describe what is a uh, a mosaic, what is a collage, what is a montage, and what is a photo montage. Two, the candidate must also understand the historical development and background of these art forms, mosaic, collage, uh, montage and photo montage, let the candidates be able to at least give a brief historical development of these art forms. Then let the candidates also understand the characteristics. What are the characteristics of a, of a mosaic? What are the char uh, characteristics of a collage? What are the characteristics of a montage and a photo montage? For instance, just an example. By mentioning the characteristics of, um, uh, of, uh, of these art forms, the candidate understands the main distinctive features of these art forms. For instance, a, a candidate might uh, be asked, what is the distinctive feature of a mosaic? Now, when creating a mosaic, we talk about paying much attention or emphasis, uh, uh, emphasizing mostly on the colored, different colored materials. That forms the most distinctive feature. When talking about collage, we pay so much attention to different textured material. So that forms the most distinctive feature of a collage. With that, when the learners are able to, under, uh, to describe and highlight the characteristics of a mosaic and a collage, it becomes easier for the candidate to be able to note the similarities and the differences of 
this particular artwork. We talk about the mosaic, the collage, the montage, the photo montage. A question might come in the exam. Can you highlight the difference or rather the, similar, the similarities of a montage and a mosaic? This is the time the candidates will use the memory or rather the knowledge of the characteristics to either uh, differentiate or show the similarities that exist between these forms of art. Away from understanding the characteristics, the similarities and the difference, let the candidates also be able to understand and mention the materials. What are some of the materials used in creation of a mosaic, a collage, a montage, and a photo montage? Now, we've talked about one of the materials. Initially, the most used material in creation of mosaic, looking at the historical background, was different colored glasses. That was initially what was used to create a mosaic. But time in the contemporary world, and with the time, and with the different uh, innovations and the discoveries, we can be able to make mosaic using paper, using reeds, using sisal, using uh, banana fibers, and all that. Again, when you're talking about collage, what are some of these materials that we use, uh, we can use in collage? We've talked about the distinctive feature of a collage as being different textile material. We can use, most of the time, we can use naturally existing uh, materials to create a collage that is sand, you can use grass, and any other form uh, item. Then we talk about montage and photo montage. Montage and photo montage basically deals with the pasting of pictures. Uh, when you talk about montage, you talk about using uh, photos, pictures that are cut to create an unusual composition different from montage, photo montage, where we use photos as they are to create a composition. So once a candidate understands the character, uh, characteristics, it becomes easier to relate the others through similarities and the differences. Away from the characteristics, the similarities and the difference of these art forms, the candidate must also be able to understand uh, uh, the materials that we mentioned, the tools, what are some of the tools that are used in creation of these art forms. Basically, we can talk about uh, uh, using a brush, especially when uh, applying the adhesives and all that. Then we have to let the candidate understand the functions. What are some of the functions of these particular art forms? Talk about the mosaic, the collage, montage, and photo montage. Then again, it is of importance that the candidates must familiarize themselves with the vocabularies. Some of the vocabularies that come or rather um, uh, we get when talking about these art forms. We talk about creating a mosaic through superimposition. Now, superimposition is simply uh, an English word that means sticking. We have vocabulary such as juxtaposition, that is sticking next to or on top of, uh, on top of. 
So those are some of the terminologies and the vocabularies that the candidates must also be able to understand their difference, what they mean, uh, and how they are used when describing or rather when referring to these particular art forms. Then we can talk about the next topic as fabric decoration. What are some of the topical, uh, subtopical uh, details that uh, the learners need to pay attention to? One, they must be able to understand the definition of fabric decoration. What is, or what rather what it means to decorate a fabric. They also need to understand the reasons for decorating a fabric. Why do we decorate a fabric? In normal circumstances, we decorate fabric for different uh, reasons. We can do it for utilitarian purpose, for identification, to, Im uh, to improve, uh, improve its value, and so on and so forth. Then we have what we call the decorative techniques. What are some of the techniques of decorating fabric? One, we have tie and dye, we have batik. And we have print making as a technique in fabric decoration. What the candidate is required, or what the learners are required to understand, as far as the techniques are concerned, what are the characteristics of these decorative techniques? What are the differences? What makes the difference between tie and dye and batik? And what makes the difference between print making in fabric decoration, uh, the difference between print making and probably batik? Now, when you're talking about print making, uh, print making, sorry, there are various ways of uh, creating prints on fabric. We talk about the silk screen printing. We can talk about uh, the stencil printing, we can talk about uh, the block printing, and so on and so forth. Away from that, it is also important that the candidates understand the, uh, the materials. What are some of the materials that we need as far as uh, fabric decoration is concerned? The main of most important uh, material is the fabric itself. You cannot create a print or you cannot decorate without the fabric. So it becomes the most important material. Then what are some of these things that are used? For instance, when we are talking about uh, the, te uh, the technique of the uh, batik technique of uh, decoration, what are some of the things that we need to create a batik? Now, when you are when you're dealing with batik, we, are, we refer to it as a blocking technique, where you are required to block parts of the fabric in order to create a pattern or in order to create a print. So what are some of these tools that we need? A perfect example we can talk about is uh, the janting tool. The janting tool is simply used for carrying hot wax that is used to block uh, parts of the fabric from uh, getting the dye. Then we have other equipments that are used. We have equip equipment such as a double boiler that is used for melting the wax. We require, uh, the candidates is required to mention at least a few of the most important equipments that are used in fabric decoration using the various techniques. Then there is uh, the process, the technique and process. When the candidates are talking about techniques, they cannot talk about techniques if they don't understand the process. As the techniques of decorating fabric we've uh, mentioned, tie and dye, batik, and printmaking. 
the candidate is required to give a chronological account of the techniques of decorating fabric. For instance, when handling uh, paper one in art, part three, or rather section C of the paper, requires the candidate to give an essay. And most of the time, the essay is the process and procedure of creating different uh, art forms. An example of such art forms is a fabric decoration or even a sculpture or a ceramic. So the candidates must be able to understand the process and procedure of creating such. Then you, they also need to understand what are some of the safety precautions when decorating a fabric. Now, during the process of decorating fabric, some of the techniques require uh, chemicals. Now, the learners must also be able to understand that some of these chemicals can, if not handled carefully, can cause fatal damages. And that is why it is of importance that uh, the learners or rather the candidates must also be able to mention or rather highlight the safety precautions when dealing with uh, decorating a fabric under fabric decoration. The printmaking we've talked about, uh, mentioned it as a technique of decorating fabric. And lastly, the candidate must also be able to understand the, uh, the vocabularies that come with fabric decoration. The next chapter, we talk about weaving and basketry, just like the other art forms. The candidates must also be able to understand and explain what is weaving, what is the definition of weaving, then they must be able to highlight and identify the types of weaves and their characteristics. The types of weaves that we have, we, uh, we have plain weaves, we have twin weaves, we have Jordan's knot, and we have coiling weave. The learners are required to be able to identify visually these types of weaves, and again, describe their characteristics. We also need to mention, or rather to pay attention to the materials, tools, and equipment for weaving. Again, pay attention to factors that determine the design of a woven item. That is the shape, the pattern, and color. Functions of woven items is also an important topic as far as uh, weaving is concerned. We talk about we talk about uh, the topic of ornaments and jewelry. Now, definition of ornament and jewelry. That is the first and the foremost important. Uh, detail the candidate should be able to uh, to talk about you must be able to understand what is an ornament and what is a jewel then we have the difference between ornament and ornamentation let the candidate be able to understand and to highlight the difference between ornament and ornamentation Again, it is also good to understand the factors that determine the design of an, of an ornament. What are these factors that we need to consider when designing an ornament? Then we, talk, we can talk about the functions of the ornament. We have both the traditional functions of ornament and in the contemporary society, we also have the functions of an ornament. What is the difference between the two? 
the functions of the ornament traditionally and the fu uh, functions of, of uh, the ornament currently in the contemporary society. Then we have the materials and tools and techniques. The candidates and the learners must be able to understand and highlight the materials used in creation of ornaments and jewelry, the tools used uh, or uh, the, the tools required in making uh, the ornaments and the techniques. What is the technique and the process of creating uh, an ornament or a jewelry. The candidates must also understand the difference between uh, a jewelry and an ornament. The, the two words are used uh, together or concurrently, but they have a difference. So let the candidates be able to tell the difference between an ornament and a jewel, and what is the common term that is used to refer to them. Now, what we have been looking at, we have looked at the breakdown topic by topic of the syllabus of art and design, right from form one to form four. It is good to note that the 13 topics we've talked about forms the basis of an examination, more so the art and design paper, one, two, and three. The candidates must pay attention to each and every topic, though we cannot deny the fact that not all topics are set in an exam at, go, uh, at a go, but it is of importance that the candidates, as you prepare, those are the areas you need, the important areas that you need to consider or to pay attention to as you prepare uh, for the art and the, uh, design exam. Lastly, before we move to the exam evaluation, in each topic, the candidates should be for, uh, should uh, follow by uh, doing a research on vocabulary peculiar to the topic. Just like I've mentioned, there are those vocabularies that come or you meet in the process of reading or in the process of revising the mentioned topics above. It is good and it is of importance for the candidate to pay attention to those vocabulary and do a research. After each and every topic, you do a research of the vocabularies that you meet per topic so that you can be able to have a wider understanding of the topic, of the vocabularies, and of the areas that we've mentioned above as far as the syllabus uh, and the topics in art and design is concerned. We'll move straight forward to exam evaluation. When you're talking about the art exam, art and design exam. Now, the art and design exam has three papers. We have paper one, that is the theory paper. We have paper two, that is the practical paper, and it is the backbone of an art examination. And then we have the paper three, which is a project paper. Now, the paper one, code 4421, has 60 marks. The duration of sitting this paper is one hour, 30 minutes. Now, it is important that the candidate, you understand that this paper is divided into three sections. 
we have section A that requires uh, short answers. And most of these, most of these are uh, uh, the questions in section A require you to be able to uh, remember what you've been taught, the knowledge you've gained in classroom to answer those questions. Then section B requires, uh, has a structure, requires structured answers. Now, as we shall be talking about these particular sections in details, I will have to highlight how these structured uh, answers should come about. And then section C requires a candidate to be able to give account of procedures, techniques, mention processes, materials and tools in creation. Section C mostly deals with the creation of an art form. You must be able to give the process of creating an art form. Paper uh, two, the marks is 100 marks, the duration is four hours, and the sections are two. We have section A, that is drawing and painting, and section B, though we shall talk about paper two later. The paper three, that is the project, it has two sections, the 2D form of art and the 3D. It comprises of 40 marks, 20 in each question. That is, you are required to answer two questions, one in 2D and the other question in 3D. The duration of uh, paper three ranges between three to five months. That is why we refer to it as the uh, project paper. Now, when you're handling paper one, what are some of the things that the candidate uh, should pay attention to? What do you need? What does the examiner or what does the exam require from you? For instance, when handling paper one, the learners are required to remember. What do you, what are you required to remember? You must exhibit the memory of the previously learned materials. What are these previously learned materials? I've given a breakdown of the topics, the 13 uh, uh, main topics in art and design. And each and every topic has a, uh, has a uh, subtopic ranging from the definition. You must first understand the definition of the topics, the techniques required to create the art form, uh -huh, the description of uh, materials and tools and all that, and many more. Now, the questions, the structure of the questions that require to, uh, you to remember for instance, you will get terminologies such as defined, name, state, identify, find, what, show, give. Those are questions that require you to remember the knowledge that you've gained. For instance, at paper one, 2014, a question reads, state two reasons why fabric may be crumbled, twisted, or plated when using it to create a collage. Now, this question requires you to remember because it requires you to state reasons why fabric may be crumbled, twisted, or plated when using it to create a collage. Again, if you look at the breakdown per topic, we talked about the candidate being able to understand and highlight the roles of a particular art form, the materials and tools and techniques and process of requiring uh, of uh, 
making an action. That comes handy when answering such a question where the candidate is required to remember what has been learned in class before. Secondly, the questions in paper one requires the candidate to remember uh, to understand. This is where the candidate has to demonstrate understanding of facts, be able to interpret, translate, and compare. For instance, in the same question paper, KCSE 2014, question 1D says, what is the difference between human figure drawing and portraiture? So if the candidate does not understand the topic and the subtopic, it becomes difficult to tackle such a question that requires them to understand. It is easier for the candidate to answer uh, uh, such questions when giving the difference, comparing and contrasting. If they understand and they are able to translate and uh, interpret the content taught in class. Three, most of the exam questions require the, uh, the candidate to apply. To apply is simply to solve problems. We talk about the problem solving process in graphic design. So the candidate must be able to apply the knowledge acquired per topic to answer such a question. For instance, if you look at uh, the questions uh, in uh, KCSE 2014 again, question 1H, it says, identify this visual symbol illustrated above and state its function. What are some of the terminology, uh, terminologies that require application? The candidates will need questions that ask them to con uh, uh, construct, identify, organize, plan, or solve just like the question that I've just read, uh, KCSE 2014, question 1, uh, 1H, it requires identify the visual symbol illustrated above and state its function. So the candidate must be able to apply the knowledge acquired per topic From the breakdown I, uh, uh, that um, I showed per topic, that let them up, uh, be able to to be able to apply whatever they've learned in class to tackle such a question. And some of the terminologies that they're supposed to be looking out for in application questions. Then, again, what else does the examiner look for? when handling paper one, analysis, analyzing. The candidate must be able to examine and break information into parts. Some of the terminologies that the candidate should be looking out for on questions that require analysis. One, you can talk about uh, you will get action uh, uh, verbs such as analyze, classify, compare, uh, contrast, or rather discover, state the function, list, talk about the beam, the function, and to distinguish the difference and the similarities between those uh, particular art forms. Most of these questions that require analysis come in the second part, or rather the section C of the theory paper. For instance, 
uh, question two. KCSE 2014 says, using the stippling technique, create three-dimensional effect on the form illustrated below. The candidate is supposed to relate. We talked about the techniques of creating value in drawing. So the, uh, the candidate is required to analyze, then apply what was learned in class as far as the shading techniques is concerned to answer that particular question. The exam also, the theory paper also looks to evaluate or rather looks uh, for the candidate to be able to, to evaluate the content taught. So the candidate must be able to make judgment and critique. In the recent trends in the exam, most, mostly in section A and B, we have questions that come with diagrams. Now these diagrams, the candidates are required to study analyze and evaluate in order to make judgments and criticize the work. For instance, if you are given a photo like uh, in section B, 20 KCSE 2019, there's a colored photo given to the candidates and the question required them to be able to explain how aerial perspective has been achieved in the illustration. So the candidate is required to, one, be able to analyze the picture, do analysis in terms of the style used, the theme of the, uh, the picture, and probably in terms of the elements and principles used in that particular pictorial composition. So when evaluating and making a judgment, what are some of the terminologies that the candidate will meet in a question? The question will come with the terminologies such as explain or evaluate or compare they'll be also be asked to give importance of a particular work and so on and so forth. Example, in question five, 2014, the question section B, the question read, in the space provided, create an inverse repeat pattern using motif below. So first, the candidate is required to evaluate the question, then be able to make judgment. That means the candidate must be able to understand what a repeat pattern is, and more so, what a repeat pattern is. So in the process of evaluating, the examiners will be given pictures. That brings me to the point I'd mentioned earlier. If these students don't uh, do, or rather don't participate in the practical work, sometimes it is very difficult for them to evaluate a picture and be able to relate the picture and what was given in class with the theory. So the candidate must be equipped with the knowledge of being able to evaluate a particular art form in terms of the style used to create that particular art form, the theme that appears in the art form, 
and the elements and principles of art and design that is portrayed in that particular art form. It is also important for the candidates to note that with the time, the exam has come with a lot of photographs. So let the candidate pay attention to one, let them identify the elements and principles that do exist in those particular art forms. Let the candidates also evaluate and be able to identify the type of the art form. If it is a drawing, a painting, a mosaic, a graphic design work, a fabric decoration, and the rest. So let the candidates be able to identify the art form. With the identification of the art form, the, the, uh, the other factor that should uh, cross their mind is what are the materials, tools, and equipments used to create that particular art form? If it is a painting, what are some of the materials that have been used to create a painting? What are some of the materials used to create an art form in fabric decoration? So with that analysis and that evaluation, it gives them an upper hand when it comes to tackling the question. Again, let the candidates be able to evaluate a particular art form in terms of the process and the procedure and the technique of creating that particular art form. That way it gives them uh, a wider knowledge of being able to tackle the question even before looking at the question itself. Then lastly, paper one, when, when handling paper one, the examiner tends to look if, or rather tends to find out if the learner is able to create, if the learner understands the process of assemblage, the process of procedures when uh, creating an art form. And this mostly comes in section C, where we have the essay questions. The essay is normally 15 marks and the candidate is required to be able to create a particular art form. For instance, if you're given a question, Describe how you would use the structure to make a form in paper mache. If the candidate is not able to one, identify the art form or rather identify uh, a tool given, for example, uh, an image of a tool is given, then the candidates are asked, what does the, or, or what art form can be made using that tool. And then the second part of that question is to be able to give a chronological process of creating an art form. That is what ESA is all about, section C, that the, uh, the candidate must be able to understand a chronological process of creating an art form. If you're talking about graphic design, what is the process? What are the materials? What are the tools required to create that particular art form? And what are, are, are the other forms of creating, uh, other techniques of creating that, uh, that art form? For instance, if you look at uh, KCSE 2014, question nine is about fabric decoration. Uh, not fabric decoration, sorry, it's about weaving. The first part of question nine says, with the aid of a labeled illustration, 
describe the term wasting in reference to weaving. Now, the candidate must be able to understand what wasting is and how wasting occur or what causes wasting in weaving. This boils down or comes down to one, the learner or rather the candidate being able to first describe what weaving is. Just like we had talked about weaving uh, previously, we talked about the learner being able to understand the definition of weaving, the types of weaves and the characteristics. Now, when you talk about the types of weaves and the characteristics, this is what brings about, uh, this gives the candidate the confidence of tackling such a question. In the process of making the weaves, we're talking about the process and the procedure of making the weaves, or when dealing with equipment. When dealing with equipment, there are those we call the defects of using those equipment. The process of understanding the defects that come with equipment for weaving is what brings about uh, terminology such as wasting. Now, there is a way uh, in the process of uh, mentioning the defects, there are ways of handling or rather going about uh, solving the defects. So in that way, the candidate becomes well equipped with the knowledge of answering a question by giving the process and the procedure. The second part of question nine says, explain four ways of achieving firmness of yarn in a mat using the gilded knot. The learner, or rather the candidate, one needs to understand what a Gilded knot looks like. And two, the candidate must be able to illustrate what a Gilded knot looks like. That comes down to the types of weaves. We mention the types of weaves as plain weave, twill weave, Gilded knots, and twining weaves. So with that, the candidate becomes confident and well equipped with the knowledge on how to answer such a question. Then uh, some of the terminologies that require the candidate to create a particular art form, we have construct, create, design, plan, or solve. And these are terminologies that are mainly used in questions in section C that gives us the 15 marks. Now, it is also good to note that answering questions in art and design uh, uh, sometimes is very interesting. And I would wish to advise the candidates it is only in art and design that most of our answers can be done in illustration form. You will be required to do illustrations here and there. You might do illustrations in a case where the candidate is not able to get the right words. I would encourage the candidates to use illustrations and diagrams to explain some of the concepts or some of the answers. As most of our answers, especially in section B, when, when we are talking about structured, uh, structured answers, what do we need, or rather, what do we consider when we are, what do we need to observe when talking about a structured answers? There are those answers that require some sort either through illustration or uh, using a diagram or you're given a diagram 
to try and analyze, evaluate, and give a judgment on those particular diagrams. So that is uh, what the question paper in art and design looks to achieve, that you have a knowledge or you have a wider understanding of what uh, you've been taught. You should be able to remember the previously learned materials in class. You should be able to understand those uh, uh, the, the materials uh, rather than uh, what you've been taught, you are supposed to under apply the knowledge you've been taught, uh, you've been taught uh, theoretically in an exam. And lastly, we can talk about the recent trends in art exams. It is also good to note that the mode and the, mode, the way the examination is set is changing and the candidates must be brought up to speed with the sum of the changes that is uh, occurring in the setting of the papers and all that. Now, one of the things that you, we need to note we require these candidates mostly to apply application. They should be able to apply the knowledge they've gained in class in relating with the questions. Many a times during uh, in the art exam, you rarely find a question that asks directly, what is the use of line? Or rather you will get a diagram a photograph or a, any form of illustration, then the question comes, the use of line will come from the picture. So it is good that the candidates understand that what the knowledge they get from class, as far as the topics are concerned, right from the introduction of art and design, all the way to the last topic, that that knowledge, they need to apply it when tackling the theory, uh, theory paper in art and design. For instance, in the recent times, the questions have come in form of photographs, pictures, and drawings. My last point on the slide, the candidates are required to study, analyze the composition, to one, identify the theme of that particular composition. If you look at the exams, the KCSE exam, in the last four to five years, we've not had an exam paper, an art exam paper without a picture, without a photograph, or without a drawing. So the candidates are required to analyze those photos, analyze the picture, study, and be able to identify the theme in that particular illustration or photo or picture, to identify the mood in the picture, three, identify the style used in creation of that particular art form or in creation of the forms or elements in that particular picture, the candidates are also required to identify the techniques. For instance, if you're given a painting, what are some of the painting techniques that exist or rather that is shown in that particular uh, painting. Then the candidates are also required to identify the elements and the elements we've mentioned to them. We've mentioned the elements of line and dot. We've mentioned shape. 
we've mentioned value, we've mentioned uh, texture, we've mentioned color, we've mentioned space, mass, solids, and voids. And uh, the principles, balance, proportion, rhythm and movement, contrast, dominance, harmony, and unity. So those are some of the things that are required by the examiner to the examinee to identify as far as questions to do with illustrated diagrams, photographs is concerned. Again, with the photographs, it is also of importance for the candidate to remember and identify famous art forms and their particular uh, artists responsible, uh, responsible for doing the works. Then the other trend that is uh, is notable in the recent times in the exam, vocabularies, variety of words in connection with the artworks or art forms, vocabularies. Now, the candidates must be able to familiarize themselves with the certain vocabularies that uh, come with the art forms. Like, for example, we can talk about uh, vocabulary such as chiaroscuro, impasto, and uh, chiaroscuro, terracotta, junk art, uh, origami, chiaroscuro is the C, uh, we have vocabularies such as Yaroscuro. Those are some of the terminologies that come with art. We have vocabularies. Uh, terracotta. We have others such as impasto. We have origami. Uh, we have um, others such as uh, junk art. and so on and so forth. So these are some of the terminologies that have come with the recent setting of the examinations. Uh, you realize that words, uh, such words tend to appear in the exam. You also find vocabularies such as colossal. When asking questions, you talk about assemblage, You can talk about uh, format and uh, you can talk about pigment. Those are just uh, some of the term uh, terminologies that uh, come with uh, in the recent past in the examination. And there are so many more. So let's the candidate be well uh, conversant uh, with the
let the candidate be well conversant with the vocabularies that we get uh, during uh, the studying process. Again, um, I've mentioned the issue about popular art, uh, artists and their work. And I gave an example of uh, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci's work. We have The Last Supper, we have Mona Lisa, there are other artists like uh, Wassily Kandinsky, uh, famous for his uh, cubism uh, style of art. Then let the, uh, the candidates be able to apply what they've learned previously uh, in class in the exam. That is being able to relate what they have done practically during the practical lessons and what they have uh, what what appears in the exam uh, and i think with that i would welcome questions from uh, my viewers and the class at large Okay, let us uh, have some questions. Let's have some questions. Let's have some questions. Changoli, let, let us have some questions. Yes, Changoli. Any questions? I was asking the, the difference between. Okay, Changuli, could you. Well, I was asking the difference between. I was asking. Eh? Yes, Changuli, we can't see you. We can't see you. We can't see you. Yes. 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 Yeah, I, yeah. I was asking. Yes. Yeah, I was asking mm -hmm. the difference between shape and form. The difference between shape, shape, and form. yeah, and shape form. and form. Now, when you talk about yeah. when you talk about shape, oh, well, we talk about uh, the general appearance of a uh, of an item. Huh? When you talk about form, we talk about a detailed appearance of a particular uh, item. So we mostly we use shapes to create form. Form. So uh, it's just a, shape is just a general uh, outlook, uh, but form we talk about a detailed outlook of a, of a, of a particular item. Okay, uh, do you have another question? Changuli, do you have any other question? Changuli, do you have an, any other question? Okay, okay if there's no any other question, uh, thank you for being my audience and uh, all the best in your exam and uh, see you next time.